Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Topaz Labs has updated Sharpen AI to version 4.1.0. In today's video, we're going to take a look at what's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Topaz Labs Sharpen AI. Today I'm going to be using Sharpen AI as a Photoshop plugin because I haven't done that yet and I have been receiving some questions from photographers who are having some issues using Sharpen AI as a Photoshop plugin. We're going to be working on this image that I have open in Photoshop and if I zoom in a bit you'll see it's very very blurry. I used an excessively slow shutter speed on this image so there is a considerable amount of motion blur. So this is a good candidate for Sharpen AI. Now, when you're in Photoshop, what you should do is send a duplicated layer to Sharpen AI. That way all your work is done on that layer. And then if it turns out you don't like the work you've done on that layer, you could just delete the layer and start over. So to duplicate the background layer, on a Mac, hit Command-J. On a PC, hit Control-J. So I have the duplicate layer. Now, I recommend that you turn this layer into a smart object. If you do that, you'll be able then to go back into Sharpen AI and readjust the image from the point you left off. So if, let's say, you use one specific Sharpen model, and once you get back into Photoshop, you decide you don't like it, you could just go back into Sharpen AI and change the model to what you want. So to make this a smart object, go up to Filter and then down to Convert for Smart Filter. That is making that layer a smart object and then the filters will become smart and we're going to be using Sharpen AI as a filter. So it'll be a smart filter. So we'll do that and you'll see then if you look at the layer there's this little square in the lower right hand corner that indicates that this layer is now a smart object. Now I'm ready to send it to Sharpen AI and to do that I'm going to go up to Filter, down to Topaz Labs and then over to Topaz Sharpen AI. And then it will invoke the Topaz Labs Sharpen AI plugin and I have it set up in comparison view that's where we're looking at these four independent paddles and what we'll do is we'll move the navigator window to an area that's of higher interest which would be the parrot's head and as I do that you have to wait then for each of the four models to update you'll see that they're updating each in turn and then you could see which one you think is best in the top left hand corner now there's several different models I should say there's technically 10 different models and I only am able to show four at any one time. In the top left hand corner I'm showing motion blur very blurry and you can see it's updated so make sure it's updated and that looks pretty good and if you want to see a before just click right on the image. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So you can see that that did a pretty good job. Next to that to the right I have autofocus very blurry. Uh, there it's not as good. It did improve it, but it's nowhere near as good as motion blur, very blurry. In the lower left hand corner, I have standard. Again, that is updated. And there's before. And there's after. And that one looks pretty good. And then to the right of that, I have too soft, very blurry. And if I right click on that, you can see a before and after. And that one isn't as good. So the two on the left are pretty good. The two on the right aren't as good. Now there are 10 different models. Technically there's actually 11 different models. Um, I'll explain in a moment. Now I want to keep for reference the motion blur very blurry and the standard. Let's go over to this top one on the right out of focus very blurry. This isn't very good so let's pick a different model for that. Um, let's try out of focus normal. I'll click on that. You have to let it update. And you'll notice below there's model parameters. I have each of these set on auto. So Topaz Lab Sharpen AI will determine the settings that should apply to the image. Now I may readjust those later, but what I do is I keep it on auto at this point in the beginning 
where I'm determining which of the models is best. Once I determine which model is best, then I'll come in and tweak these model parameters to the image. Now, autofocus normal isn't very good. Autofocus very noisy, see what that looks like. That's not very good. Most of these autofocus ones probably won't good if won't be good if that other one isn't good. Now I mentioned that there's actually ten different models. I um, as you look at them, if you count them out, three, six, nine, there's ten. There's technically eleven. And let me show you. If I go up to standard, you can see there's two different types of standard models. There's a lens blur model and there's a motion blur model. So if I change that standard model to motion blur, you could see that that's a different model. So we technically have 11 different models, to be clear. Now, none of those that I just clicked on this one look better than either of these two on the left. Uh, this low, one on the right, I could come in and mess around with the too soft to see if I could get a better too soft mode, which I don't think I will. You do have to wait for it to update each time. So I've determined that motion blur, very blurry, and standard are the two best. And if I eyeball them, let's say I determine that motion blur, very blurry is the best. Then what I do is I make sure that is active by clicking on it and making sure that it has this blue uh, label in the lower left-hand corner. And then I'll go over to single view. Now what you could do, I, I should add, there is an auto for the picking of the model that you use as well. You have to be in single view like I am now and then you could turn this little switch. And when you turn that little switch, it'll determine which model should be used. It has been my experience that it almost never picks the best model. For example, it picked out of focus very blurry. You could tell there's before, there's after. That's not as good as the model I, I chose. So I'll turn that off and I'll go back up to motion blur, very blurry. That's the one I liked. Then what I'll do is I could come in and I could tweak the model parameters that I had set to auto if I like. And I kind of like it. I think it did a good job just as it is. There's before, there's after. Now one of the improvements they've introduced in this version of Sharpen AI is a better select uh, algorithm Select is masking. What it will do is when I turn this on, it will automatically find the subject in the image. And you can see by looking at the mask here, it found the parrot. Wherever it's white is where it is applying the sharpening. And wherever it's black, it's not applying any sharpening there. It found the parrot very nicely. We don't want to sharpen the blurry background. That should stay blurry. We just want to sharpen the subject, in this case, the parrot or it's a macaw. Either way, that's what we're sharpening. So that is one of the improvements in this version of Sharpen AI is better um, subject detection and masking. It supposedly does a more precise mask in this version. And the little bit I've experimented with it, I have found it to be a better mask. For example, you can see over here how it's kind of finding these individual um, feathers that are in the kind of back of the bird. In the past, it may not, might not have done that. It might have masked right across and included the background that is peeking out between those feathers. It's now able to discern the individual feathers much more effectively. So that's pretty good. I like it. Now, if you did want to modify the mask, you could click on Refine. When you do that, it will give a red overlay onto the image where it's the mask is being applied, and you can see how it uh, uh, got most of those uh, feathers. Let's call them flyaway feathers. And you could change the overlay color if you'd like by clicking here. I'm not going to do that. Um, you could show the overlay or turn it off. And then you have a brush, and with this brush you could use, use it to add to the mask or remove from the mask. What you could do is go down here in the lower right hand corner and click right here. And when you do, you could also um, turn this refine section off and on. As you can see, just like that. So I don't need to refine this mask. I think it's good the way it is. So I'm going to apply these uh, changes. So we'll click Apply. And what it will do is it will now uh, process the image. 
return us to Photoshop, and because I have it on its own smart layer, it preserved the original layer. So I could just turn this layer off. There's the before, and there's after. There's before, and there's after. Now, let's say that I've now starting to question myself. I used that, uh, I think it was out of focus, very blurry. And that standard model looked pretty good as well. Maybe I want to switch to that standard model. Well, to do that, just double click on right here where it says Topaz Sharpen AI. Double click right there, and it will reopen the plugin. And it will be kind of right where we left off. Uh, it has to re update, as you can see. But I could go back to the comparison view, and then I could go back to standard mode. And you'll have to click on each of these to get them to update, or click on one, and then it will finally start to update. So let's just say, and every time I should add, every time you reposition the navigator, it will have to re-update everything. So it has to go through and update everything again. And that could be annoying, and especially if you have a slower computer, it could be particularly annoying. Now it kind of remembers where we left off. Um, let's say we just determine that the standard model, we like that a little better, um, but maybe it's just a little bit too sharp. So I'm just going to remove a little bit of the blur slider or move that down a, a, a touch. Let that update again. And it's updated. Okay, now I like that. So make sure that that is the active model by having the blue box in the corner and click apply. Then it will bring us back into. Um, into uh, Photoshop and I forgot to do something. Um, this is supposed to be a feature of this um, of this version but I found it doesn't seem to be working in that it was supposed to remember my masking and it didn't. I don't know if you noticed that. Now here's before after. Let me just show you the before after. There's before, there's after. Let's double click on Topaz Sharpen AI again. Now it's going to go back in and it's going to it has to get updated. Let it update. All right, we chose this one in the lower left hand corner, this standard. But you'll notice that the mask isn't there. We have to turn that on. Supposedly, in this version of um, Sharpen AI, it was going to remember the mask. But what I found, it doesn't. So that is not. A feature perhaps I read that improperly I'll have a link to what is new uh, in this version of sharpen AI in the description below this video uh, that's the way I interpreted it it was supposed to remember this masking but it doesn't it did remember the setting remember I took it off auto and I moved it down so it did remember that but it didn't remember the actual mask so I'll click apply now so hopefully that gets uh, updated. If I did interpret that correctly, um, and again, you could um, look at that web page I'm talking about in the description below this video. I have a link to it, and I think you'll agree they are implying that it should remember the mask. And here's the before after. So there's before, and there's after, and you can see it really does a miraculous job. I think it's pretty good. It saves some images like this that I just screwed up, you know, too slow of a shutter speed. I, I shot at this at 1 15th of a second, and um, I think I was using a 100 millimeter lens, if I remember right. So that was much too slow. Uh, thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>